means it's not a personal health, health issue that won't go away, but a health trend. Nearly 4% of pregnant women use illicit drugs. Over half a million babies are born every year exposed to drugs or alcohol in the womb. These abandoned babies have medical issues that make them unpopular for adoption, but you're about to meet a nurse who stepped up to fight for them. My name is Linda. I've been a registered nurse for more than 25 years in neonatal and pediatric intensive care. And more than a decade ago, I saw the increase of methamphetamines come through our nurseries. So what I was seeing is these mothers not being able to test negative and test results to get their infants back. And as a result, the infants sometimes even before they were born became wards of the court, AKA foster children. Eight years ago, I was raising two teenagers. I was kind of going through the empty nest syndrome, so I decided I was going to look into medically fragile foster children. I went through the process and became licensed to be a medically fragile foster home. I received a call from an owner of a group home that had a 24-week preemie that spent his first 18 months in the hospital due to complications due to his prematurity and his meth exposure from his mother. His name was Sammy and she requested for me to take him home because she was very concerned that if he went to the institution that he was slated to go to, that he would come down with a condition called failure to thrive and give up the will to live. I walked into the home and there was a little boy sitting at the table. He suffered from a condition called hemangiomas where he had all these kind of blood tumors all over his face. And he just looked at me with these these brilliant blue eyes and my heart just dropped right then. I created Angels in Waiting, a nonprofit organization of nurses recruiting nurses to become medically fragile foster parents. It's a program where nurses are able to clock in at home and care for medically fragile foster children. I can honestly tell you that clocking in at home and doing medically fragile foster children isn't for every nurse. It's the most challenging nursing career but also the most rewarding. After Linda started Angels in Waiting, it was only a matter of time before other nurses joined in. My name is Lisa, and I've been a nurse for 23 years. My name is Donna, and I've been a nurse for eight years. We were talking to a social worker, and she introduced us to the idea of doing foster care. Linda came onto the unit one day and she was caring for a child that she was going to be taking home and she started telling me about angels in waiting about taking these kids home being their foster parents so we got started in the foster care business through angels in waiting i knew in my heart that this that this was something that i wanted to do they called us and asked if we wanted to have a set of twins in our home and we said yes i went home and told my husband and we agreed this was going to be foster. This wasn't going to be an adoption. Sarah and Emily were born three months early. Sarah was one pound 12 ounces, and Emily was one pound nine ounces. Alex was born about four weeks premature, and he was born with a condition where the abdominal cavity doesn't form completely, so his intestines and his bladder were on the outside of his body. I just thought it would be a wonderful thing to be a part of, to help another human being. Please welcome Linda, Donna, and Lisa, all of whom have, have provided foster care for these fragile babies. And, and let me first just say, wow. You're what you were doing yeah. is, it, it is <laughs> so unselfish, so giving, and so remarkable because these little babies need so very much just to survive. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole host of psychological, social, and medical issues that, that go along with the meth addiction and what happens to the babies. And let me show you. And you started to touch on that um, briefly. But basically, when you have a meth addicted mom, she's not only taking methamphetamine, she's probably also taking other drugs like alcohol and smoking tobacco as well. So all these substances are going to go into the mother, either she's gonna smoke them, and again, even the methamphetamine can be cut with different type of substances, so we don't know exactly what's happening. But we do know that these meth moms present with hypertension most of the time, and that's how they're, they're looked at. We see the hypertension. What happens with the hypertension is it constricts the vessel
vessels that go to the baby. So these vessels constrict, and that also decreases the blood flow to the baby and can make them be small for gestational age. Um, it can also cause uh, placental abruption, which is very dangerous and life-threatening to the mother as well as the baby. Um, but it can also cause premature labor and the, the premature deliveries that we see with methamphetamine babies. Now, this affects the baby in a whole host of ways besides hypertension. It goes to the baby, and it can also affect all the different systems of the baby, including the cardiovascular system. It can cause hypertension and problems in the cardiovascular system. It can cause cleft palates. It can cause birth defects because you don't know at what time the methamphetamine was used because usually these women don't get good prenatal care. Um, and also it can affect the gastrointestinal system, the central nervous system. It can affect just about every system of the baby, also the motor and development skills as well. So these babies need a lot of attention as well. The mothers have addictions and they are needing attention and that's why they can't give attention mm -hmm. to their, yeah, their and children. And long term for these kids, you know, after they're born, you know, to deal with their learning problems, behavior problems, any birth defects, SIDS is 20 times higher in a baby uh, when the mom used drugs. So, you know, there's a lot of problems to address. And, you know, it's not just illicit drugs. You know, every hour a baby is born to a mother that was addicted to prescription drugs, you know, usually painkillers. And oftentimes, you know, the mom and the doctor know about it, but, you know, the mom maybe had chronic back pain and needed to be on his medications, but now the baby has to get, you know, is born addicted to these things, and, and it's a big problem. So many challenges for these babies, and the question is, of course, what happened to these foster babies? You won't believe where they all ended up. Stick around. Sammy's a true medical miracle. This little boy has been through hell and back, and still is a fighter. We've been covering health problems that won't go away, and we just met the nurses involved with the program, Angels in Waiting. It connects nurses to foster babies in need of special attention. What happened to those foster babies? Take a look. We adopted Sarah and Emily. Having Emily and Sarah in our lives and as an addition to our family has changed our lives for the better. They've just given us so much joy, and they're just sweet little girls. Sammy's been a part of our life, a part of our family. Sammy's a true medical miracle. This little boy has been through hell and back and still is a fighter and fights with a smile on his face and a gleam in his eye. He's just the happiest little boy that a mom could ever hope for. And um, he truly makes my heart sing. I had always known that we were going to be adopting Alex. It was just waiting for my husband to come to that decision. I realized that Alex was our son and we were his parents and that uh, nothing was ever going to be able to change that. And so at that point we decided to make adoption uh, a reality and make Alex formally our son in the eyes of the law, like he already was in our hearts. You know, it's, it's so remarkable. What you've now done with this program, but what you've done as individuals, was there a moment, your foster parents first, but is there a moment where you know, I want to adopt this child? For me, it was um, a visitation with the biological mom, and he didn't know her, and she was trying to have family photos done, and I had to stand off to the side out of the photo, but hold his hand. And so I knew at that moment that we're all he knows, and um, we knew then we were going to adopt. Similar stories? With me, when he called me mommy, and he had conviction, I knew I was going to do whatever it took to be his mommy. And how have the babies, how, how have the kids thrived since the adoption? My girls were born at 24 weeks, and they, the smallest one was really, really sick when we brought her home. And we weren't even sure if she was going to make it. So now they're four years old, and they're just doing wonderful. You know, I, I'm dying to meet these kids. Do you guys want to meet them? Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's have the kids come on out. Hey. I 
I think we're looking at proof right here that there's no medicine any better than love. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you all for coming on the show. And you know, we're actually going to have more information about Angels in Waiting at our website, thedoctorstv.com. <laughs> and coming up, it's the fear we probably all have that won't go away. Stick around. Winter's long nights can leave even the most positive person 